today on Keep Shooting Monday, how to make sure this matches this. Hey everyone, Greg Cazillo from Cazillo.com. Welcome to Keep Shooting Monday number 49. Before everyone screams at me, I know that my screen did not match my print. My lights are tungsten based, so that makes my daylight balanced MacBook screen look weird color. So that's why they didn't quite match perfectly. And so anyway, we will make sure that they do match later on and I'll go over that stuff. Uh, next thing, I'm going to be doing a review today of an Adorama tripod. I actually really like this thing. I'm surprised that I like it. It has some really nice features. I'm going to talk about that coming up soon. Uh, next thing, make sure you sign up for the email newsletter. If you want to be notified of all of the updates and tell you about things that are going on, make sure you sign up. Uh, I've noticed that I've had very low display rates lately on Facebook. They're not getting a lot of uh, hits from that, so uh, if you want to have all those videos and see everything that's going on in the Kazillion's world, make sure you sign up for that email newsletter. This week I'm doing an interview with the Epson Product Manager. Post all of your questions over on this link. I'm really excited about this interview. I'm hoping to have it up for next week, but we will see. I'll certainly do my best to get that up and going. But um, I want to see, hear your feedback, so make sure you get those posted. A few interesting things from Nikon rumors this week. Uh, first thing, two Nikon patents, a 600F4 and a 402.8. They're also reporting a new 35mm 1.8G lens to be released early next year in 2000, I guess it's now 14, huh? Uh, one more thing, a Nikon DF review from Tom Grill. Really great photos of the DF and um, good commentary. I like the article overall and he gave it a really good review. I like how it's just kind of um, down and dirty. It, it actually made a lot of sense. Very well written, excellent article. Adobe released Lightroom 5.3 with DF support and support for a few other cameras that came out, raw support that is. So make sure you check that out and upgrade if you're a Lightroom user. One more thing, Alex Wild posted real letters that he sends out to copyright infringers. I'm guessing a lot of people steal his awesome photographs of these tiny little bugs and things that are out there. So check out this article over on Petapixel where he showed you the actual letters from, you know, a simple takedown notice to, uh, hey, you need to pay me now because you keep stealing my images. So one more interesting article about the Philadelphia Eagles versus Detroit Lions football game in the snow. There was like eight inches of snow on the field at one point and almost a whiteout. Basically, it talked about how the photographer had to change up his shooting style and his thought process when shooting and how he wanted to shoot. He actually ended up switching over to a manual focus mode in order to get all the photos that he wanted and to bring set back something different and something usable. So. I'm guessing the autofocus was just grabbing right on to whatever was in the foreground, which is snow. <laughs> and so that obviously isn't going to work, but uh, worked out well. He's got some really cool images and an excellent uh, written article there. In the Canon world, the 7D has the new firmware fixes that fix an FTP uh, U over USB file transfer issue. And also beware of 5D Mark III battery issues, at least third party battery issues with the new firmware for that camera. ICC profiles and Lightroom. What is the proper way to use them in order to get the printed results matching what you see on your calibrated monitor? Just like Jim says in that comment, make sure you have a calibrated monitor. I cannot stress this enough that you need to be calibrating your monitor. Buy one of the spiders. They're not too expensive. Uh, calibrate it, you'd be amazed what a big difference a calibrated monitor makes. Um, even different times of the day, if you're printing at night versus 
uh, you know, if you're sitting next to a window during the day, makes a huge difference in what you actually see on your screen. So you need to be calibrating your monitor if you want accurate color. Uh, I've said that once and I'll probably keep on saying it because so many people don't believe me or they don't go out, bother to buy one and then they have problems with it. So that is step one in this. If you cannot get step one done, you will probably not get good results in the, all the other steps here. So first, get that set up. Next, head over to the print module. In the print module, you will set your color management inside of the print job box. As you see here, you'll hit the SPR2000. This is for the R2000 and the premium luster paper. Make sure you're choosing the right profile for the type of paper that you have. If you do, if you are using a paper from another manufacturer, make sure you are setting that up and, and they have profiles for that. One other thing that I will mention is make sure you have good inks. If your inks are inconsistent, if you have third party inks, they're probably not going to be as good or as consistent. That's why I suggest sticking with the Epson inks rather than some of those other manufacturers that are out there. Uh, you'll get much better results overall when sticking with those Epson inks because they're made to work with that specific printer. Uh, another thing is then going in and making sure that all of your settings are right in the properties box. Um, make sure you set your media type. Again, setting for the right type of paper, color or black and white. Typically what I suggest is make sure that your photos are black, either black and white or color when they're in Lightroom or in Photoshop before you are doing before you send it into that make all of your adjustments all right um, print quality is quality options then I set them at five and off for the last one no color adjustment that's because Lightroom is telling the printer which profile to use uh, paper settings as your source with sheet and then your size as whatever print size you're using and uh, if you want a borderless you can check that I always use the print preview on the PC, and I think that is about all. There's a couple more settings in the page layout box here. Nothing really that you need to deal with or, or super worry about. You hit print, and it's probably going to look pretty darn good, if not perfect. If something looks a little bit off, you probably have one of your settings off. I've not seen a calibrated print a screen and a print with the proper settings not match yet. Um, you need to have some pretty specific issues. Uh, typically it's a color problem or an ink problem, something along those lines where you know something just isn't quite matching up right or maybe you have the, the wrong ink or the wrong paper setting. Those are typically the problems. 99% of the time this is going to make it happen and keep your prints and your screen matching. Now a review of this guy, the Adorama 3-Pod Tripod. Uh, comes in a nice flat small case, not very big at all, with your little tool kit and a little stud when you're using it either without the center section of the tripod or in the monopod mode. You might need that little stud there, so that's why they include that guy. So about the tripod itself, first as you see, it packs flat. And that's really nice when putting it in smaller bags. I could probably get this thing as is in my, the back pocket of my Retrospective 30 or very easily packed inside of the case of my airport security two bag. Um, what happens is this center section actually comes off and in order to get it in that case, you actually disconnect that guy so that they're then packed side by side and over there outside of the camera there's actually a little baggie that goes over top of the the ball head so that they don't clang together and scratch each other up so you take it out of the case and then you would screw this together like that and then your legs they pop out ingenious little design uh, they do go all the way, or almost all the way. I forget what the lowest height. I'll put a couple more specs in the description. Goes very, very low. And like I said, there's a, this thing's still cold because it was outside. That's why some of the, the things are a little tight. Plus, I got these big fat fingers. So 
there you go. So it gets nice and low, and then you can take the center section off, mount that right on top of the tripod mount, and it gets super low. It's probably, I say probably less than 18 inches, something like that. But like I said, I'll, I'll put that spec in there. It also does come with a little accessory hanger right here. Uh, the legs, all carbon fiber, same with the center section. One big advantage of carbon fiber that they don't talk about is that it doesn't get as cold. This thing was actually, I just literally brought this in from outside and it's like 25 degrees outside. And this head is super cold. Whereas these legs being carbon fiber, you barely feel the cold. They don't really hold that coldness or heat. And so your hands don't get as cold when using it. Although the center section does have a nice pad on it so that uh, that obviously helps and you can use that one to move it around. Uh, this center section does come loose and then you can put the next section you can take this section off and then attach that and that gives you your monopod with everything fully extended it was actually tall enough for me to use I'm six foot four and so that was plenty tall for me to use as a monopod my monopod that I actually have is an older Gitzo aluminum one it's about six foot I want to say six foot seven or six foot eight but if i wanted to carry a lighter one for the day this would be the way to go and uh plenty sturdy for that so um next thing i wanted to mention is the leg locks the leg locks are about a quarter turn or a third of a turn in order to lock and unlock those legs works really nice very very smooth and bam you're done that quick again quarter turn lock and unlock and that leg is locked and then ready to go and it's not going to move on you other features of this tripod from adorama first thing you have a compass and you actually have three levels on this guy you have a round one here and you have another round one here and then you have a horizontal one bubble level here i'll go over that in a second it folds up nice and flat like we talked about that little accessory guy uh, this center section does come off and you can mount that directly to the top here with the accessories provided. You don't have to buy anything extra in order to make that happen and keep it very low if that's what you want to do with it. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the ball head. Very easy to use controls. Uh, I like how it, it just, it's very, very smooth. Even though it's not an expensive, super expensive tripod, the controls are still very smooth. They tighten very nicely. Um, it just works very, very, very well. Feels really good. Uh, and actually, I just felt a stop. There's actually a little stop there for a couple of the degree settings, which is cool. So that's pretty neat. Bubble level. Uh, you got one on this side, which you would use when the head is up here in this normal horizontal position. Then you have the other one. Oops, I keep doing that. Then you have this one on top, which you would use when shooting the camera in a vertical position. So having those two, and I was looking at it like, why is there two of them on there? But if you think about it, that makes sense. So that you can have two of those levels and be sure that you're, le you're level both in horizontal and vertical. Comes with an Arca Swiss style plate and compatible plate. So if you have some other accessories or a really right stuff plate or something like that, that Arca Swiss is going to attach there without a problem. I think I said that the center section comes up. There you go. And it's uh, the whole tripod is just a little bit under my eye level, which is good for most situations that I use. For the most part, I shoot relatively high since I am tall, but um, you know, it's nice to have that option, you know, of a relatively tall tripod. Um, Overall, very well-made unit. I like the fact that it comes with a case. I especially like the fact that it folds flat and um, nice and easy to use with barely any tools. So works out well. So any questions about that, please let me know. And if you have any questions about for Epson for the upcoming interview, make sure you add them. Greg Cazillo, cazillo.com. Thanks guys, keep shooting.